This is Mala coming to you from Mala's Kitchen to yours. And today we're making cabbage curry a la Mala style. Now in that bowl, as you can see, we have some hot peppers, some potatoes over here. Of course, some cabbage, it's roughly chopped. And that's a curry paste. Now in the curry paste, you'll notice I've added two tablespoons of tomato paste, a one large onion blended with about five cloves of garlic, one teaspoon of coriander powder, a half a teaspoon of garam masala, two teaspoons actually of curry powder, and one turmeric powder. This is a big old pot here of about two to three tablespoons of ghee that's heating up nicely. We need that pot nice and screaming hot so we can add that curry paste directly to this pot. There it is. Ah, there we go. Now we're gonna cook this we're gonna saute it until it starts to become a bit of a darker color and it starts to release its own oils see the color of that oil is already changing yep that's what we like we're gonna cook this off a bit more until it becomes more of a dry texture It's quite important as this is sauteing actually you keep on stirring because you don't want the masalas to be burning at all quick review of the stuff that's going to go into this curry some sliced onions and hot peppers and there it is that masala has been cooked down it's nice and dry so at this point this is where you're gonna to want to add those potatoes and as you add those potatoes, you want to keep on stirring and incorporating them nicely so that each piece is nicely coated. Yep, we're going to add the potatoes, add the potatoes, add the potatoes. And by the way, this is about three to four uh, medium or small potatoes that I've actually um, halved and put in here. I kind of like a bit of potato in my curry. And potatoes are also a natural thickener when you add them to any dish. Did I mention how amazing this kitchen smells? Good God, the aromas are up. Oh, mm. I know not everyone likes curry, but let me tell you, you don't know what you're missing. You're missing all the good stuff. So we're gonna keep on incorporating this and we're going to add about a cup of water now to the pot. So what we're going to do is we're going to scrape down the sides, scrape down the bottom. Make sure we get everything nice and together into a bit more of a cohesive look. So, yep, let's scrape the sides off so that nothing catches on the bottom. That's where all those flavors are. And as you can see, those flavors are truly blooming together now. The colors of those that those potatoes are actually taking on that nice bright yellow color. And that's precisely what we want. That is precisely what we want. We're gonna add another cup of water. We're gonna keep stirring at this point. And then we're gonna let these potatoes cook for a little while. And when they're just about, maybe about a half done way, when the potatoes are about half cooked, then we're going to add all of that chopped cabbage and we're going to incorporate that nicely as well. And if it's needed, we'll add a bit more water to just barely cover the top of that cabbage and let it cook. We'll put a lid on it, we'll let it cook for a little while and then you'll keep on babysitting it, keep on checking. Oh, that looks great. Now we're going to add those chopped onions that we had there on the side. Oh, that looks beautiful, isn't it? Some white onions and some red onions. Believe you me, this adds so much flavor. It really, really, really does. There's no way you should skimp when you're cooking on ingredients. Otherwise, you end up with a terrible dish. And what's the point? What's the point if you're going to skip on ingredients, right? 
Ah, uh, there we can see those potatoes are bubbling away. Those onions are nice and melted up in there. They're cooking. And as you can see, that little red ball over there, that's a really hot pepper. In we're gonna go with those chopped up cabbage. And by the way, that was one small green cabbage, or some people call it a white cabbage. Looks green to me. Um, so I'm gonna go with green. It's a green cabbage, small. I did a rough chop on it. And as you can see, it's not shredded because shredded would be more of a paper fine type thready type look. This is more of a coarse chop and you want to have a coarse chop because you want to make sure that when the cabbage is cooked, you still have a bit of crispness to it. Your vegetables should not be soggy at all. That's There's nothing worse than soft vegetable and with no body to it anymore. That's just baby food at that point. And now we're gonna toss in about a handful of grape tomatoes and the rest of those chopped up sliced hot peppers in there. And whatever is remaining of those onions as well. At this point, you wanna really mix well, as you can see. And I think we have just about enough liquid in there that we probably don't need much more. As it cooks, cabbage naturally is a watered vegetable. So as you can see, it's giving off its own juices in there. So we're gonna let this cook as it is for a while. Put a lid on, keep checking it. And when that gravy is reduced to around about half of that amount, then you know the curry is done. By the way, at this point, this is where you wanna add your salt to taste also. It's always best to add a little now and then taste. If you need more, then you add more. Mmm, bubbling away. Can I tell you, when I first <laughs> tasted a cabbage curry, I couldn't believe it. At first, I wrinkled up my nose and I said, what? Cabbage curry? You gotta be kidding me. But then I tasted it. Boy, was I shocked and boy, was I surprised. I was so surprised and so delighted in such a wonderful way that I decided to come up with my own recipe to make cabbage curry a la mala style. And I gotta tell you, this particular recipe is the bomb. This is exactly where we want it and I think our cabbage curry is pretty much done right here. Thank you for watching. This is Mala coming to you from Mala's Kitchen to yours. Happy cooking, y'all.